Hello, so in this video, we are gonna be showing you how to use ticks um, to generate some probability trees. Now, as before with the last video, I said, well, look, this is how to generate a Venn diagram in LaTeX and you can do it. But of course there is a package which will enable you to do it in a fraction of the time and in a fraction of the code required. Same kind of story here. Um, probability trees, again, you can have massive probability trees. To be honest with you, if you are going down that route, I would encourage you to use a package such as Forest, um, which will enable you to do that in a fraction of the time and a fraction of the code. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna illustrate how you could theoretically use ticks picture to um, generate some probability trees if you wanted that kind of fine level of control for example okay so first of all let's go through and let's define the different coordinates and then let's see how we're going to join them together so let's first of all start by putting my starting coordinate which I'm going to use coordinate command and I'm going to call it zero or O and I'm going to just pop that at zero zero now as you're going through these you notice that I'm basically calling these numbers in on the basis that I've kind of fiddled around with this before and these are the kind of coordinates that work well for me. But when I first thought about these coordinates, I thought about that grid like I was doing in the first and second video and thinking about literally, right, there's zero, zero. So roughly, where do I want the second set of branches to end up? OK, so thinking about it in terms of that grid is a useful way, even if I haven't explicitly drawn it on the right hand side. OK, so my second coordinate is going to be the end of my first set of branches. So I'm going to call it A0 and I'm going to pop that at 2 and 1.5. Okay and then the second choice is going to be B. So I'm going to call it B0 and I'm going to pop that at 2 and negative 1.5. So again if you have a look at this I'm kind of thinking about it and saying, well, okay, I want it to move two units across in each of those cases. My height is zero, so one of them is going to go up to 1.5. The other one's going to go down by the same distance, hence why it's negative 1.5. So you can see how I'm thinking about this grid. If I just show you what this looks like, because I appreciate at the moment it's kind of blank and just code and it's quite difficult. So let's actually draw um, a line from the origin, so zero, to a naught, first of all. And then let's draw a line on the second set from naught or from zero to uh, B naught. Okay, so let's see what that looks like first of all, so you can start to see what I'm trying to develop here. Okay, um, okay, so we've got an error. Let's see why. Ah, might be because I've used a zero instead of a O. There we go, that's better. So it's still the same thing because uh, Overleaf is very friendly and it tries to work out exactly what I'm trying to do. But you can see here is um, the origin, here is zero. Here is A0, and then right at the very bottom, there's B0, okay? Now from this, I'm gonna actually put a label on each of the corners. So let's say a pose that the first choice is saying, well, it's a type of car. It's either gonna be white or it's gonna be black. So actually let's put a label where I've got A0, okay? So I'm gonna put a label, and I'm gonna pop it on the right, and I'm just gonna call that label white, okay? So again, just using those square brackets next to my coordinate, if I recompile that now, that A0 to 1.5 is going to bring in the, the letter white. And if I just want to put a label on the bottom branch, so it's again, put it on the right. And this branch is going to be a black. Okay, so it's going to be white or it's going to be black car. Okay, cool. So then from this, I want to develop two more branches. Now, just to make sure that the branches start at the same position, what I'm effectively going to do is I'm going to define a new coordinate just to the right of the white and just to the right of the black. Okay, so again, this is my second set of branches. So I'm going to define a coordinate and this coordinate is going to be at A1, which is going to be just to the right of where the white is. And I'm going to pop this at 3.2, 1.5. Again, if it seems very specific, why 3.2? Um, it's just because I've tried this out and it kind of, it looks right. Okay, so again, usually what you're doing is when you're defining these coordinates or when you're deriving or creating these diagrams, you won't get it right first time, but it's fine. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. So actually let's pop another coordinate here. Let's call this B1, which again is gonna be the coordinate just to the right of the black. And I'm gonna define that at 3.2 and uh, negative 1.5, okay? So that's not going to do anything. So now let's actually define each of the two different branches. So I'm just going to bring in um, the first set of branches. So from white and then going up. So again, you're going to have like A and B. So I'm just going to call it coordinate. And I'm going to call this one AA1, right? Uh, and I'm going to pop this one at 5.2. And I'm going to draw a coordinate 
at A, B1. So it's again, choice A and then B on the second branch. And it's gonna be the first choice that we've made. And I'm gonna pop this at five and one. So again, if I just draw um, my lines as I need to, so I'm gonna go draw a line from the origin. Sorry, not from the origin this time. I'm gonna go from A1 to AA1. Sorry, AA1, there we go. And I'm gonna also be drawing a line from a1 to AB1, which is what I've just found. Okay, so let me make sure that's capital letters. Cool. Okay, so now if I recompile that, you should be able to see from white there's another set of branches. Um, just for the sake of argument, I'm also going to do the second set. So again, coordinate. This is going to be BA1, and I'm going to pop that one at 5 and negative 1. And then my last coordinate is going to be called BB1. And I'm going to pop that at uh, 5 and negative 2. So again, just thinking about that grid. And then obviously I can draw those things together. So this time I'm going to be drawing. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste those just for the sake of time. So from B1 in each of those cases. And I'm going to be drawing to BA1 and BB1, which I've just defined. Okay. So again, just thinking about where those coordinates lie in relation to the grid, you're able to define relatively quickly a probability tree as such. Again, I might want some um, labels on the right hand side. So let's suppose that uh, depending on the type of car, I then define whether it's clean or dirty. So again, coming up to where my coordinates are, I'm just going to pop a label in. The label is going to be on the right. And in this case, I'm going to say it's clean or dirty. Okay, so if I just recompile that, my bottom branches should come up as clean and dirty. And if I just do exactly the same thing with my upper two coordinates, so that's that one. And that's that one. Then very quickly, I've just derived a nice probability tree where I've got white and black as my first choice and clean and dirty. In fact, what I might actually do is pop a couple of labels at the top. So if I want to sort of say what each of these two labels represent, if I come right to the very top, I'm just going to pop a couple of coordinates. Um, I'm going to underline this. In fact, let me make it text BF in each of those cases. There we go. So I'm going to underline color and state, and I'm going to call them label one, label two. And that's just going to pop a couple of labels at the top like so. So the first one is color. The second one is state. Now, one final thing which I'm going to show you with this is fairly conventional that we have probabilities along the branches. So let me show you how we can put those probabilities on those branches. Notice, first of all, that I'm bringing in the package nice frac. You can do it just with conventional maths fractions, but I find that nice frac, because there's not a lot of space going on, just works a little bit better. So if you lo load the package nice frac, works a little bit better here. OK, so first of all, these are my first set of branches. So drawing from O to A0 and B0 respectively. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a node midway between. OK, so I'm just going to go node after. Like so, so I'm just going to put a space afterwards, go node. And again, I'm going to put my parameters for my node. So I want it to be midway because fairly obviously I want it to be halfway through like I've sort of put in there. So I want it to be midway and I'm also going to put it above and left. OK, so if I go above left. And I'm going to put in curly brackets what I actually want to go there. So in this case, you can see I'm going to try and put 20 over 50. So I'm just going to enter my maths mode. I'm going to go um, nice frac. And on the numerator, I'm going to go 20. On denominator, I'm going to go 50. So that's 20 over 50. Just to show you the same kind of thing, if I just copy and paste that code just for the sake of time on my second set of branches. And I want this one to obviously be 30 over 50, okay? Because of course they have to add up to totality. So 20 over 50 are here, and I make sure that 30 over 50 appears here. The reason why that didn't work is I want it above left. So obviously in this case, I want it to be below and left. So if I just change that to be below and left, then that appears as appropriate. And of course I can do a similar kind of thing with each of those two things. So again, if I change my node along my second set of branches, which is gonna be this one, uh, here. Okay. And then change my node to be this one. So again, just for the sake of time, I'm just copying and pasting this across. But hopefully you can see that that one's going to be above, that one's going to be below. So if I recompile that, we get 15 over 20 and 5 over 20 appearing there and there. And just finally on the last one, 
similar kind of thing where I've got my draw commands, just put a space and just pop my node at the end. And that will tell LaTeX literally put the node halfway between, in this case below, and that's telling you what the node is actually going to be there. So what the text is actually going to be on that node. So then you can see nice and simply, you've got the color, the state, you've got the labels of each of the branches, and now you've got all the probabilities on the branches, of course. And hopefully you can see now we've developed that, how you can change this and adapt this to maybe have um, three branches or four branches or as many branches as you like. Once you've kind of got the idea, it's literally just a case of plotting the coordinates or telling LaTeX where you want the coordinates, and then just putting the nodes and text on those branches.